I think people might assume that a timber mill is still old school sawing sticks out of round things and sending it through to the customer. But really the thinking that has gone into running a sawmill these days and continues to be improved on is actually quite exciting. It's a, a difficult science. Trees are predictable to a point. So trying to get the best out of it is very difficult. Controlling how much of that log turns into sawn timber it's not an easy task and the technologies that they have in place at the Tuan Mill are really sophisticated. It's a world-class mill and they're actually getting every cubic metre that they can out of that log. The organisation process is just extraordinary. It amazes people when they see how fast we can actually feed through timber and how nice it all looks and it's all being graded. Even now it's still being refined, we're still finding things that get the most out of the tree. It's that tribal knowledge that we develop as a family company that really is our strength. It's 130 years of ancestry of knowledge, the intangible stuff, you know, the stuff about respecting trees, about respecting people as part of your business. That's not a, it's not a course that you can do. I couldn't tell you where our steel is sourced from or our concrete sourced from. I could tell you the manufacturer, but I couldn't go to the place. To be able to drive through the forest and then see it processed and then see it as an end product, it's reassuring to know that they're using every part of that. Here at Talara Nursery we grow all the southern pine seedlings and Araucaria seedlings for Queensland's plantations. It is a big operation. We grow 9 million southern pine seedlings and 1 million Araucaria. There's about 4 or 5 million seedlings that you can probably see around here at the moment. To us every single tree is valuable. So right from the very, very beginning we're investing significant money into research and genetic breeding to get the best tree possible. When Queensland Forestry had the nursery, there was a lot of collaboration between Hind and Forestry. So a lot of the trees that we're harvesting today are, are trees that have come out of a collaborative process with Forestry. That's continued with HQP today. We have a good relationship with them. So we're often talking to their wood scientists about the sort of trees that they're going to plant. These are our southern pine seedlings. They're a hybrid between Pinus eleodii and Pinus carabea. All of the families that we grow here have been selected for the qualities that Hine want out of timber. As a sawmiller, consistency is important to us. We certainly don't want a tree that grows too fast and is too dense, uh, but primarily we're looking for trees that have good form. We uh, generally sow in spring and autumn. The mix that we use is 95% composted pine bark, which comes directly from, from the hind mill. The birds love the seed, so we keep them in bird netted uh, shade houses. They stay in there for six weeks. Once the seed caps uh, fallen off the seedlings, then they can be brought out into the full sun, and they stay in the full sun uh, for up to nine months. When we're getting them ready for the field, we reduce the watering that they get to harden them up. But before they're sent out to plant, we sort the seedlings, and so we, we take out all the dead ones or anything that doesn't meet our specifications for, for planting in the field. I guess I love that the kind of things that we're doing now isn't for our own immediate benefit, it's for the benefit of generations to come, which I, I find something really magical about that. So the trees I'm planting now, I know that my kids or grandkids are going to see them being harvested, which I think, I don't know, there's something amazing about that, something I really love. We're here in a plantation forest near the Pine Timber Mill in Chuan in Queensland. What helps us reduce the carbon footprint right down is our location. The bulk of our resource here is within 25 kilometres of the mill. So it cuts down on road emissions, on roading, on fuel, all those things. We are certified under two systems, so our Responsible Wood and FSC. What that means is that we can guarantee that the wood comes from responsibly managed, legally harvested uh, forests and plantations. And the main benefit of that is responsibly sourced wood is the only building material that, that helps tackle climate change. Forestry is a long game for us, so um, we don't harvest our southern pine seedlings until they're 28 years old. I've had conversations with people and they were here when trees were first planted and they're now getting up to about 30 years old, so they will have seen an entire rotation. So the, the planting contractors pick them up from here, they take them to the field and then they've got crews that, that plant them. They have to 
first dunk the tray in water to make sure it's nice and moist before they plant it. And then they'll just have crews planting along the, the mound to whatever stocking that we've um, allocated for that site. And we really believe in protecting the native forest buffers and the waterways and the creeks that we through our plantations. Control burns keep down the risk of wildfire and the loss of trees. It's a big green space for people, so we have a lot of other people that rely on our forest and use our forest. Scout, rallies, horse riding groups. Walk their dogs, go for a run, go for a drive if you're feeling like just getting out and about. One of their main focuses is to supply us with a continuously uniform product. When a plantation is ready for thinning, we go in and we select which trees we want to take out, and usually that's the poorer quality trees. Uh, we certainly don't want split trees like this one here where there's two stems actually growing on one tree. We'll take those out and allow the straightest, biggest trees to keep growing on. The slower they grow, the, the denser the fibre will be. When a tree is harvested, and typically more than one, sometimes up to half a dozen trees, are planted in its place and then we get that continuity. We have the capacity to harvest up to 2.5 million tonnes of timber per year. It's a it's a really good thing to see that volume because we know that this is a sustainable material. But at any one time there's only about 3% of the plantation harvested. We have assured that we can get the resource to the mill that our customers will need at the end of the day. Our plans with our growers would go out five to ten years and the plans that we have with them around what logs and how many that we can bring in the mill go out two years with certainty. So from a harvesting point of view, we liaise heavily with our harvesting contractors to make sure we get the right mix of cut to length locks and the right mix of stems in the yard. Now the advantage of us getting the stems is that we can then cut that whole stem up into the right lengths that we're after for the customer and make sure we get the right diameters in those lengths that we need for the cutting patterns that we use. We know that we're managing it really well. We know that we've got strong environmental values um, and we know we're producing a renewable product. To give an idea of that, an average house will consume about 12 uh, cubic metres of timber and in the 1 million hectares of plantation in Australia, that 12 cubic metres will be regrown in about 20 seconds. No other building material can make a claim like that. And people that are, are using hind timber know that they've come from a sustainable forest. We don't want to waste any of that tree. We want to respect it. Once it hits the merchandiser, we want nice straight stems. That way it's uh, easy to scan and process and less reject. We have approximately 70 loads of logs or stems delivered per day. Once the log is delivered, we debark it first. And the debarker is almost like a pencil sharpener. It actually tears all the bark off. It's just the right pressure. And then from there, uh, the log goes through the scanning system. And what we're doing there is just looking for the form of the log. And we use that then to decide how best to cut that up to meet the orders that we have. After it gets cut, it uh, drops down to a belt. It's really got two functions. One is to acoustically test each log. So we measure the speed that it takes sound to travel along each log. And then depending on the stiffness of that log and its size and shape, we then sort it into one of 48 different groups. So that way we've got traceability back into that compartment. We can provide that information back to the tree grower and get some idea what the likely yield is for the next time they plant that log. Saw milling is a pretty hefty business, so when you see um, a tree actually going through a log merchandiser and you've got lots of chains moving pretty quickly with something that's pretty heavy, it's pretty amazing that we can build equipment like that and keep it running the way that we do. Both of our mills run 24-7 and because it's a 24-7 operation it means that we can deliver to our customers when they need it. So the way in which this sawmill works is that we run logs that are very close together inside. We need to run them quite quickly so that way we can lock the saw line up, run them nose to tail and we're almost getting the same quantity of boards out of every log so it's very predictable for us. When a log arrives at the green mill the first thing that has to happen to it is that it's scanned to see what the quality of that log is. So the first three-dimensional scanner is looking for logs that are too long or too short, too fat or too skinny or too bent. And if they're any or all of those things, then they get rejected and they get processed later on. The very first thing that happens on our saw line is that we chip a flat surface onto the side of each log. That enables us to, to hold it firmly and position it correctly within 0.5 of a millimetre. The next thing we do is turn that log and we chip the sides of that log again. So we've got this log that's got four flat faces on it. And that really gives us some good datum points for the other machinery to work off. The next thing that we'd like to do to that is we want to shape all the pieces out of that log 
that aren't going to be structural boards. So we don't do that with saws, we do that with big routers. We then router the sides of the log away. So that then leaves us with some nice clean steps that we can then run saws through and peel the boards off the outside. After it leaves the saw line, the boards then move from left to right, so they start transversing down a series of two conveyors up into the trimmer section of the mill. We have an acoustic tester there. So what it's doing is, again, it's striking the board and measuring how long it takes the sound to travel the length of that board. So the trimmer does the stiffness assessment, does a visual assessment of the geometry of the board, cuts it to the specification that we're after, and then it sorts it into one of 76 bins. When we sort the boards into any of those bins, what we do is we put a number on that board that tells us exactly what bin it's going to and the cutting pattern that it came from. So we get a lot of detailed data in the final boards that we can link back to the bush. So that number, it's used by the kilns to help them choose the drying schedule that they're going to use. It's used then by the dry mill to help them determine the processing method they're going to use. After they're sorted, we then discharge them from the bins. They go up to our stacker. We layer those boards down and put kiln strips in between them to allow airflow to go through there in our kiln. It's interesting that of the cubic metre of log that has gone in, we actually recovered just over half of that into sawn boards. What we want to do with all of that byproduct is screen out from that what's going to be used as fuel to help provide heat that we use to dry our wood, and what of that can go to wood chip, which can be used for paper or for pallets or it could be used for medium density fibre board. The mill is a constantly evolving production line. Just last year we had the, the link line upgrade. We cannot achieve the recoveries we're getting now without that technology. When I first started with the site, we we're running at 46, 47 percent. Now we're achieving the 52. So if we're not doing the right thing by that log, it's a waste. The constant trade-off for any sawmiller is are you cutting for the maximum yield out of that log or the maximum value out of that log? And they're not necessarily the same. What's the best result for our customer? And what's the best result for the business? And what's the best result for the tree? You now it's been there for 30 years. We want to give it all the respect that we can. Now the purpose of the kilns is to bring that timber down to a moisture content that's around about 12%. The most amount of effort we put into our straightness of our product goes into our drying of our product. Wood being a natural organism, it's got a lot of growing stresses from what it's been through for the last 30 years of its life. So our objective is to relieve those growing stresses. So we do that at a high temperature. So a portion of our sawdust is used to uh, generate heating capacity through the kilns. It is generating the heat that dries all of our timber. So you sort of hop out of the car in the morning and it just smells like cinnamon donuts almost. Yeah, that sweet resiny smell. Once the kiln packs reach the kilns, we marshal them up into a charge. They're brought up to uh, 190 degrees C. And that's often when the wood will want to move. So to stop that happening, we weight the wood up at one tonne per square metre, so quite heavy. And we hold that for approximately uh, three and a half hours. So at the end of the drying process, we've got a piece of timber that has got an average moisture content of around about 11 to 12 per cent. It can't be down at 8 per cent or it can't be as high as 16. It needs to be around that 12, so it's stable. But the outer fibres of that board are actually drier than the inner fibres. That's a, the, the physics of the drying process. So what we need to do there is even that moisture out. So we take the kiln charge out of the kiln and we put them into what we call a reconditioning kiln. It runs at 96 degrees Celsius. And while that's happening, we're introducing steam to actually stabilise that product. So its job is to bring those outer fibres up to the same moisture content as the inner fibres and encourage the moisture within the piece to become one. Once that happens, we transfer that out into the actual stock control system and uh, wait for it to uh, enter the dry mill. There used to be a saying that we had when we had our hardwood mills that uh, hardwood drying is an art and softwood drying is a science, and it really is. Every piece of timber you can see in those stacks here, that is for a customer and waiting to be processed. So the job of the dry mill is to dress the timber down to a known size. The second major job of the dry mill is to sort it into structural grades. Every board that's produced here gets a unique ID number printed on it. It also contains all of the structural information for that board. So if we have a problem with any board in the market, we can go back and have a look at all the structural and scanning data that we have. Back in 1996, when this grading system called MGP was developed, the requirement was to test 100 boards a year. Well, we currently test more than 10,000 boards a year. We mechanically test the board, we visually scan it, 
We then pass it through a warp scanner, which measures how much bowspring or twist is in the board. And we have to decide, well, is it worth selling a longer board at a lower structural grade, or do we want to cut that board back to a shorter board and sell it for a higher structural grade? The dry mill runs at 125 boards a minute, so quite quick. We have optimisation engineers there. Watching what that timber is doing through the process, collecting that data, making decisions with the data and changing the process as we operate it. To maximise the value extraction from the log, to get more from the log. Increasingly, more and more customers are wanting termite protection. It is very important because termite damage in Australia is costing more than fire and storm in Kambai. So we have three kinds of treatments. We call it T2 Blue, T2 Red and also T3 Green Plus. Pretty cool thing, our company is leading the race in creating chemicals. T2 Blue is probably our most common. So that's a really great treatment that was an innovation for Hein a number of years ago. Uh, it's a water-based treatment, it's got no VOCs in it. When we first released the product, it was, it was a gold product. Uh, people couldn't tell if it was treated or untreated, so we made the choice to go to a blue dye in our treatment process. And over the years, it's pleasing to see that the rest of the industry has adopted that as the standard for treatment. Even the steel guys have copied the blue. We recently improved our T3 Green product to T3 Green Plus. The previous green timber was uh, more smelly and the exposure to the VOC material needs to be limited. It was a challenge for our customers and that's why we step up and improve to a water-based product. It's been developed over many years of um, developing secret herbs and spices. Some of those we hold pretty close to our, our chests within Hine. We have a dedicated lab for testing our uh, treatments and during our test what we do, we cut the wood and we look at the cross-section with the difference in color, we can see how far it has gone into the wood to have a more sustainable product for our customers. We've built over 350,000 homes and we've never had a failure. The guys in this area, they are picking our loads and loading them onto our trucks and sending them out to our customers. We would send about 400,000 cube of product out of those gates every year. So one of the great things about this mill is that we do take in full length stems. So the advantage for us is that if we've got a particular swing in customer orders that we need to follow, we can cut those stems up to exactly the logs we need to service that order. So in real terms, there's timber that comes in in log form on a Monday and by the following Wednesday, it can be in a customer's yard. Yeah, we can load 24 seven out of here if we need to. From a sustainability point of view, we don't want to use plastic on our product, but if a customer requests it, then we actually wrap it for them if they've got external yard storage and they can't store it inside. We recognise that we're not just looking after our business, but we're looking after the communities. I love walking around, walking around a hardware store and seeing the hind name or the hind the hind timber sitting in the rack. And I just really love that at the end of the day, our product will store carbon and I think that that's a great thing for the planet. <laughs>